Howdy neighbors, David here. Da, 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 da. And today on Boondock Stallions, we're going to be taking a look at Pirates of the Caribbean. In particular, I would like to look at the first three movies and not Pirates of the Caribbean 4. And it's not to throw shade or discredit them, but those two movies don't really add to or take away from the theory that I'm proposing here. And that theory is that Captain Jack Sparrow has a sibling. Well, I guess it would be a half-sibling because it would only be from his father, Captain T. So, before we get started, go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you can get all of our current videos and updates on my Halloween party trivia contest that I'll talk more about here at the end of the video. So, let's take a look at Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. The two of them don't really work together because, I mean, I'm sorry, the two of them do I'm <laughs> sorry, really work together because of their differences. It's their differences that make them stronger. It doesn't really matter about the wealth and the class and the power that uh, Elizabeth's family comes from or the fact that Will came from pirates. And his father is a pirate and a good man, as is Will, which is why he ended up taking on the Flying Dutchman at the end of the movie, which is really kind of tragic, but I mean, him and Elizabeth still get there one day every 10 years to be together, and I think that's beautiful because even then, once Elizabeth gets old and passes away, she can spend all of eternity with him aboard the Flying Dutchman, ferrying uh, the dead over to the next life. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. And, but it, let's say that it doesn't always work out. Let's take a look at Elizabeth's fascination with pirates. Elizabeth loves pirates. We know this from a very young age, that she was fascinated by their lifestyle and the goings-on that they would do. Would do. Um, and that she even had a bit of an attraction for Captain Jack Sparrow. Jack, in turn, had feelings for her as well. And the two of them, while they knew it would never work, because while Jack is a pirate and a good man, he's just a bit more pirate than she would like, and she is just a bit too prim and proper for his liking. But the attraction is still there, and they both know that it never would work between them. So, let's say that that relationship had happened again before. We know it's not uncommon now that Elizabeth, being someone of privilege and uh, uh, title, would be attracted to somebody like Captain Jack Sparrow. So let's take a look at Jack's father, Captain Teague. Now, there's not really much known about Captain Teague. I've looked everywhere. It's very vague. He's your bog-standard pirate, you know, raiding, plundering, pillaging, probably other stuff because he's a pirate. But that's just it. He sailed the seven seas. So there's every chance that at some point while he was sailing that he might have run into a female like Elizabeth who had a bit of a taste for the bad boy that is a pirate. And so the two of them might have had an extramarital affair. And I say extramarital affair because, well, we know that um, Captain Teague was married to Jack's mother, and the two of them were together for quite some time, even after her death, and he carried her around as a shrunken head. So, premarital affair. And let's say that this woman that he uh, had his affair with was a very upper class, very moneyed individual, fell in love with the pirate. Him being a pirate would have told her something like, you know, time and tide, love, and just book. He would have gotten on his boat and just left. And this would have upset her because she would have been heartbroken and in love with this guy and then find out that she's pregnant with Captain Teague's child. Now, granted, she's not going to call the child Teague after his father. She probably doesn't even want the kid to know that his father is a pirate or anybody else in society to know that she'd been slumming it with the pirates. So she would have lied about the father and maybe, I guess, at some point told her child that, you know, your father is a pirate. And let's think, what would that do to a child knowing that uh, his father was a pirate that abandoned him and his mother from a very young age, wanted nothing to do with them, never contacted him, never wrote, never sent money, never did anything. He ghosted a whole lot of them. It might build up a lot of resentment. It might build up a lot of anger. As a matter of fact, that child might have grown up to absolutely despise pirates and make sure that they distinguish themselves as everything a pirate isn't a rigid, law-abiding citizen who is very, very by the rules and wants law and order to reign supreme. And like I said, he absolutely hates pirates. Does that sound familiar? Do we know somebody in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise that has an absolute distaste for pirates? That's right, Lord Cutler Beckett. 
Cutler Beckett is a prime example of somebody who absolutely hates pirates. I mean, if you couldn't tell how much he hated Jack and the rest of them from Dead Man's Chest, then you probably should have known that he was dead serious about his hatred of pirates at the beginning of Pirates of the Caribbean 3, because At World's End starts with a guy holding up a parchment that reads something like this. Today, by order of the king, all persons known or convicted of piracy will be hanged. People known to aid people convicted of piracy shall be hanged. If you've ever met a pirate, you will be hanged. If you can spell pirate or are even listening to me say pirate right now, you're going to be hanged. Pirate. And so, I mean, Disney hung a child. It was a singing child, and Disney was like, nope no boundaries. This guy absolutely hates pirates. And you could even describe Cutler Beckett with a lot of the same characteristics as Jack. He's very smart, he's very cunning, he's very resourceful, and he is just a little extra crazy. And there's a scene, I hope to God that I can get it uh, into this video, but there's a scene where the two of them are aboard uh, the boat, the Flying Dutchman negotiating the terms of Jack's surrender slash employment, and turning over the heart of Davy Jones to him. And the two of them are just having this back and forth, but they act like half-siblings. There's camaraderie, there's familiarity, and we know that they both left their mark on each other, as Cutler Beckett had explained in the second beginning of the second movie, that, you know, we know that Jack has the P tech, or branded on his arm, and that would have come from the East India Trading Company. That would have been Cutler Beckett learning his... Uh, who his family was, learning that Jack was his brother, and despising Jack because he was the son that was favored by the father. Oh, yeah, he hates all of these guys. Doesn't care, as far as he's concerned, they may be blood, but that's as far as it goes. They're not family, so he absolutely despises Captain Jack. And so, that's pretty much my whole theory that uh, Captain Jack had a half-brother, and it's just a simple, silly little theory that I had. I actually came up with this back when uh, we were in the halfway point between Pirates 2 and Pirates 3. We were waiting. Uh, we were in limbo waiting for Pirates of the Caribbean 3 to come out, and I had a million theories. I didn't have a YouTube channel back then, obviously, but, um, you know, I pretty much guessed the relationship between Tia Dalma and Davy Jones. I had no idea that she was Calypso. That got me pretty good, but I would guess that there was a relationship between them because I recognize heartbreak and tragedy and the anger and rage that fills people with that, and I was like, yeah, Davy Jones, that guy has been hurt, like Lionel Richie. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Hurt. Like, somebody hurt Lionel Richie, and I really want to know who that was. It was probably Tia Donna, because, I mean, I'm just saying, look what she did to Davy Jones. He went all octopus I almost said something vulgar, sorry. When all octopus like in the face, he was pretty cool. But, um, so, that's my theory, Stallions. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, save the date. I'm preparing my first ever live stream on Halloween. The world we're living in is a little nuts, and right now it looks like we might not get Halloween, which seems a little nuts because Halloween's a mask holiday. Ha <laughs> ha! Put your mask on, let's go out, trick or treating. Hand out little bottles of sanitation or hand sanitizer and wipes with the candy so kids can clean their stuff when they get home. Let's go trick or treating. But it's probably not gonna happen. And since it's not gonna happen, I'm gonna be here at home in full costume, live streaming with you at 7 p.m. We're gonna have a Halloween party slash horror movie trivia contest. That's right, I'm gonna have cash prizes. The cash is gonna be paid out by me and only me. YouTube is not responsible for any prizes you win. First prize is gonna be $50, second prize is gonna be $25, and third prize is going to be $10. No entry fee, no purchase necessary to enter, just show up and be ready to play. It's gonna be 20 questions, each question is worth one point. Person with the highest number of points wins, and there are multiple choices and bonus questions and bonus points to be earned. So, I hope you love horror movies. I hope you love getting money, because I don't know about you guys, I like money. I don't really want to give any of y'all my money, but if you win it, you get it straight out of my pocket through PayPal or Cash App. So, 
hit the like button, subscribe, be excellent to each other, and party on, dudes. <laughs>